of these ellies are still playing and i do apologize for our gremlins that are creeping in it's unfortunately where we are at chitwood dam we're right in the middle and it sometimes is like this so hopefully they will stay away i've moved slightly and it seems to really work when it comes to the gremlins if you move all of half a meter they seem to drop off for some reason so hopefully they will stay away but these two are still having a whale of a time and you can see now where they're wet is starting to pick up that gold color as the sun is starting to set there's this golden light that will be cast across Chitwa Dam and it's getting to the best time of the day for them to swim and hopefully they'll continue to swim as that sun really gets low because the dam itself the water becomes a rich gold color and because they wet they pick up all of that light and they themselves become this dark gold and it really is absolutely beautiful to see so hopefully they'll carry on other than that we have Boris I see Boris is sitting just on the side here he's just having a little nap so there's Boris now Chloe who's six years old all the way from Singapore hello Chloe you want to know not about Boris the crocodile but you want to know about our ellies and you want to know whether how it's I tell male and female apart in their water like this well Chloe the thing about males the easiest way to tell that they are males is by looking at their forehead so you see their foreheads there they have a rounded forehead whereas a female elephant it will have a very very squared off forehead so it will almost look like the corner of a wall on their forehead as opposed to these males that have this sort of rounded shape like that so that's how I know also the tusks of the male tend to be thicker than the females and we don't see any presence of little babies here when we see female herds there will always be young elephants around and so that's how we know even in the water that these are males because if there were boys I mean girls around they would have little babies with them and the babies would be around the edge before coming out talking about just now that the foreheads are different I'm talking about this area here Chloe and so on the male it makes that shape which is very round but on the female the shape is like that where the head ends so that's the easiest way to tell between male and female of an elephant when they're swimming now the boys themselves also are a little bit larger it could be a really big female to be that size so we know that those are both boys just because of the size of them Isn't this wonderful just to watch them playing? Jeffa, who's 23 years old, Jeffa, you're wondering what percentage of males end up breeding with the females in the herd. Well, Jeffa, there's two parts to this. Firstly, males don't stay with herds. So they only come into a herd when there's a female that's actually in an Easter cycle. And you'll find different males from all over will come until the biggest male and the strongest male who physically can outcompete the others will take over and will actually mate with her. So there isn't a percentage of males that lives within the herd that is then vying for a possibility to mate. They live by themselves and only come to the herd when the females are in heat. In terms of the percentage of males that will actually mate with a female, in terms terms of the population the percentage must be I would say maybe not even 10% of the elephant bull population will end up mating in a given area because remember that the only the biggest and the strongest will mate and at the end of the day elephants roam massive distances and so you'll find a lot of the big boys will grow quite far to mate with females and so I would say probably maybe not 10% that's a bit low maybe 20% of the bull population will actually be breeding effectively and and heavily and then you'll find that maybe at certain times of the year as well will affect the breeding potential of certain bulls because as there's more resources or well, as a fish eagle coming across the dam is going to fly between us and the elephants there it comes I wonder if it's going to land up on this dead tree there we go oh well done Craigie very good has it got a fish there does it I think it might have something it looked as though it was something flapping on its feet no it's being dive bombed by lapwings though. Look, the lapwings coming in. There we go. And you see the lapwings are trying to chase it away. They know the fish eagle is a predator and so they're trying to keep it away from potentially if there's little chicks there. They're trying to chase that fish eagle. We know the fish eagle does grab birds. We've seen it grabbing the buffalo weavers that are 
in the nest behind us and so it is potentially why the lapwings are growing at it. Maybe this fish eagle has gone after their chicks before and you can see it's being dive bombed by all angles at the moment and it won't stop. Those lapwings will keep going until the fish eagle flies away. You can see the fish eagle is not enjoying this at all. Head is ducked down and it must be quite unpleasant to have lapwings dive bombing you all the time and while they're sitting like that it's got no ability to outmaneuver the lapwing. The lapwing is a smaller bird. There we go. You see, they've done what they needed to do and they've actually chased that fish eagle away. Once the fish eagle gets to the other side of the dam, the lapwings will stop and they'll go and land back where they were and be happy that they've chased said fish eagle away. It doesn't have a kill though. I thought it might have a kill, but it doesn't. When it was flying away there, I could see quite clearly that there was no sign of any fish in its talons. But that was very cool to watch. Just get a water hole.